Hello students, in this video we'll see how to price a call option when the probabilities are not constant throughout the tree. Let's suppose we have a stock that follows the following tree. The stock will start at 10 and it will go up or down to 13 or 9 and the 13 will go up either to 15.3 or 12.3 and the 9 will go up to either 11.4 or down to 9.4 and here are the associated probabilities. This will happen with probability 5 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1 quarter, and 3 quarters. And so this is my stock tree and each time step will be a time step of one unit. So this will occur over one unit, and this will occur over one unit, and we'll assume that we have a risk-free rate of 10%. So what we'd like to do is we want to find, so the question we will address is to find the price of a call option with strike 11 and expiration 2. So what we will do is we will actually consider this by doing the discounted expected value with respect to the risk neutral probability measure using the Martingale approach. So what we'll do is we will say we'll figure out the pricing structure, we will find, so we'll first find the risk neutral probabilities. P star is ordinarily e to the r times 1, s1 minus s2 over s3 minus s2. But for the simplicity of calculation, we'll assume that it's not a continuous rate of return, we'll just assume it's an annual rate of return. So we will re replace this probability with a 1 plus r s1 minus s2 over s3 minus s2, assuming that this is an annual rate of return and not a continuous rate of return. So if we simplify this formula, we will see that we'll have a 1.1 times 10 minus the s2, which will be a 9, all divided by s3 minus s2, which is 13 minus 9, which is going to be 2 over 4, or 1 half. So that gives us the first step in our tree. So what we see is we see that p star is equal to a half. So in our new tree, we can have a new tree down over here that has the values of our option. We'll have to price our call option. So the call option, we has a strike price of 11, so let's fill in the values of the call option at the terminal times. So the strike price is 11, we'll have a 4.3 over here, we will have a 1.3 over here, we will have a 0.4 over here, and we will have a 0 over here. So those are the values of our call option at the terminal times, we need to figure out the intermediate values. We've just found that the risk neutral probability at this first juncture is 1 half and 1 half, and notice that's much different than the original probability. Next we'll find p star for each of these intermediate brackets. So this is the p star that corresponds to this branch over here. Now the p star that will correspond to the next branch, this top branch over here, will be p star, and that will be 1.1 times 13 minus the down, and the down is going to be 12.3 over the difference of the stock prices, 15.3 minus 12.3. So we see the top is going to be a 14. 0.3 minus 12.3 over 15.3 minus 12.3. So the top is 2 and the bottom is 3. So we see that the probabilities for this top part of the tree will be 2 thirds and 1 third. 
And finally, we compute the risk neutral probabilities for the bottom part of the tree. The bottom risk neutral probabilities. So this will be for the first step. This will be for the top step. And this will be for the bottom step. It will be the stock price 9 times 1.1 minus the lower value 9.4 divided by 11.4 minus 9.4. We see the top is 0.5 and the bottom is 2. So we see that this is going to be 1 quarter. So the probabilities in this branch will be 1 quarter and three quarters. And now if I wanted to find the derivative d3 and d2, we can use this tree structure. So d3 will be 1 over 1.1, the discount factor, times the expected value of this branch. So it'll be 2 thirds times 4.3 plus 1 third times 1.3. That will be my D3. And my D2 will be the discount, 1.1. And then the expected value over here, which would be 1 quarter, 0.4, plus 3 quarters times 0. Now that I know D3 and D2, I can discount one more time to find D1. So D1 will be 1 over 1.1 times the expected value of D3 and D2. So it'll be 1 half of D2 plus 1 half of D3. I will fill in the values D2 to D3 to this formula, and this will give me the value of the call option at time one. So to summarize, if I'm given a stock tree with a variety of probabilities, I will first find the risk neutral probabilities on every subtree. I will discount, find the discount expected values of the derivatives on each of those subbranches, and continue to discount over and over again until I get to the initial sort of seed of the tree. In this calculation, we made one important simplification. We assume that rather than have a continuous rate of compounding, we have an annual rate of compounding to simplify the calculations. The exact same procedure will work if there's an exponential in the formulas. The formulas will just get substantially more complicated and have to carry E around. Thank you very much.